Hello. So from what I understand, chromatic aberration is a lens artifact that happens when different light wavelengths are treated differently in the optics of the glass of the lens. And like I said, that's what I understand. So maybe that's not exactly what's happening, but it's a good enough way for me to understand it <laughs> to start to deal with it. And the reason why this is a useful thing to know is sometimes your footage will have chromatic aberration, as in the case of these trees, and you'd want to recreate that effect on your CG elements that you're adding to the shot. And I didn't know how to do this in a very good way until a few days ago, so I'd like to share that here. So here's my composite. Let's just go over the good old in-the-box way to do it that has been around for years, and that's if you go to like a uh, transform, you can get lens distortion, and you can plop that on your composite. I mean, you could do all sorts of fun distortion stuff, but if you turn up this dispersion, then that's what really gets what I've always known as chromatic aberration. You don't need to zoom in too much to see. Yeah, this is insane. And probably a little bit could go a long way. I've used this a lot for just straight up CG renders, but it's really difficult to actually mix into just the CG elements of a shot and not like the whole rest of the shot. And just toss this over top of my CG elements. We get this blackness and it's like, oh man, do I have to convert the pre-multiplied? What's going on here? The alpha is all messed up. That's not really a fun time. Like I said, more recently, I've discovered a really good method that actually we have a lot more customization with. If I grab this and move this back to end of the comp here, you can see we get almost like a whole rainbow of color and that doesn't seem to be what I have going on here in my original footage. And so I've wondered for quite a while, how do we get this like green on one side and kind of more cyan on the other side? If we look at this side of things, it's actually kind of green in the middle and then more cyan on the outside. So this has been kind of a complicated problem that I didn't know to solve for a long time. And I've said that three times now, so let's get to the solution. So what we want to do, we want to separate things into their red, blue, and green channels and then combine them after altering one slightly. So there used to be a convert tab here somewhere, but now I think it's in color. And if we go to mix, we can go combine color. And let's also grab the mix separate color node. And so if we just take the red and the green and the blue and we plug all of these back in, everything is the way it was before. But now we have these different channels that we can do fine adjustments to, which is pretty cool. So we could grab like a transform node, for example, if we threw this on the green channel, we could translate it on the X axis and everything gets shifted over. And you can see, we start to get this effect that is kind of similar to what we had on the trees, kind of green on one side and more of a cyan on the other side. Very cool. The weird thing with this though, is if we look on the other side of the comp, it's the same thing over here. So whereas in the original footage, it actually gets mirrored kind of on the other side of the lens. So the green is on the inner part and the cyan is on the outer part. As far as I know, another thing that seems to be a characteristic of chromatic aberration is in the center of the frame, you don't get nearly as much as on the outside of the frame, which once again, I'm sure there's all sorts of cool lens physics that has to do with how that works. And if you're just using a transform node and you're just shifting one channel over, that doesn't really seem to replicate that effect very well. And so in this situation, I saw the chromatic aberration right here on these trees and I wanted it right here on my CG object and I didn't know how to do it. So what do you do when you don't know how to do something in Blender? Well, <laughs> I look up stuff in Nuke sometimes. I found a good Nuke tutorial that's actually like 11 years old, but in Nuke, they do that same thing. They separate all of the red, green, and blue channels. And this is actually a fascinating video. It tells you kind of more of the, like, the physics of how lenses do it. But he gets to the compositing part, and instead of just translating all of one channel, what he actually does is he scales one channel. So I'm gonna unmute my transform node here. I'm going to set the X translation down to zero and we can bump our scale downwards and we get this crazy effect where everything on the side is extremely affected and the stuff in the middle actually isn't affected nearly as much because it's kind of in the center, it's scaling towards that point. Let's take this and add a couple of nines to it and suddenly we get something quite more realistic. And once again, you get a tiny bit of an edge here, but 
let's take this nine and set it to like a five say and this seems to be the effect so now we've got this all over our cg object obviously this is way too much but that's kind of the idea this is going on the whole frame so let's just make sure this happens to only our cg object and actually if we look down here you can see i've actually added this in already so this is the kind of color correction on this near robot. And I've got some values that I've changed up a little bit, but if we zoom in here, we can see I've taken the green channel, I've scaled it slightly on the X axis. I'm not sure if this is a vertical thing or if it's just a horizontal thing, but in this case, I've only scaled the horizontal axis and I've set it to like 9995, so it's very subtle. And I've also added a couple pixels of blur. And so these are super minor things that are pretty difficult to see a huge difference on in 4K. So here's the before and here's the after. And that's a nice little shift. Another thing, I did the exact same transforms to the alpha as well, which I think once we put that into the main comp has a nice effect on the edges. And dang it, I just can't leave this out. Something that I've learned recently from my friend Jacob is that you should use alpha convert nodes on either side of your color correction. So we've got alpha convert to straight from our render, and then I'm doing my RGB curves for exposure, I'm doing my chromatic aberration, and then we convert the alpha back to pre-multiplied. And this just creates a nice little safe zone where the alpha works. I, I don't know, I don't know what it's doing, but it seems to actually work really nicely. So yeah, that's how I've dealt with a pretty customized case of chromatic aberration in my visual effects shot here. And if you don't really care about chromatic aberration, I don't know how you made it this far, but maybe a good takeaway is that you can sometimes use tutorials for other software and apply them in Blender and it works pretty nicely. So also, if you've made it this far, I have a gift for you and that's the seamless looping smoke elements. Just having these on hand can be really handy a lot of the time when I'm working on visual effects shots just to add some life and depth into stuff. So if you want to grab these for free, there's a link in the description where you can find those. But other than that, I hope you have an excellent day.